What's going on my fellow reef builders? Welcome to our second ever installment of the Reefology series where we try to tell you everything you need to know about having a successful reef tank. In our previous video, we talked all about how we purify our water here at the studio, how we mix the seawater, and how we test that to an appropriate salinity in parts per thousand. And it feels like a great um, segue to go from talking about salt water to talking about fresh water. So this video is gonna be all about evaporation and auto top-offs. Now, in the Reef Aquarium Studio here, we exclusively use gravity fed auto top off that are managed by gravity by float valves such as these this is a very simple device they come in all kinds of shapes and sizes and and quality and it is just the most dead simple method possible not in the world just possible to automatically manage the evaporation that happens on your reef aquarium if you came to this video looking for any kind of information about auto top off devices, you're not going to find them in this installment of uh, Reefology. There are countless videos discussing different ATO devices, machines and kits, and I just find it to be one of the most mystifying things in the reef aquarium hobby because instead of relying on gravity and a mechanical float switch like this to do the work of automatically replacing water in your tank, um, the reef aquarium hobby uh, has just fixated on these machines to do what should be a very, very simple function. Now, if you have an auto top off device, you at least need uh, water one water level sensor, one power supply for the, control for the controller, a pump, and then you still have to maintain the water in your top off reservoir. And in some cases, you might actually add a second flow switch or have a second flow switch um, to um, sense when the water level is getting too high. So that's five points of failure possible when you use an auto top off device. We're gonna talk about some applications where it only is practical to use an ATO machine, um, but for our purposes here at the studio, we have about 17 displays running around, seven or eight systems, 10 systems, probably a little bit more than that. Um, so if we had an ATO machine for every one of those, that'd be like 50 new things that we would introduce that could possibly go wrong um, in terms of managing auto top off here at the studio. If you're wondering why your reef store and all your fellow hobbyists pretty much only talk about um, auto top off devices and machines for managing evaporation on your aquarium, I don't have any solid answer, but the thing is an auto top off machine is gonna cost you at least $100 up to $150 to $200 for you know installing all this stuff on your tank. And so it's not really in the interest of stores and online vendors and uh, online retailers to tell you the most simple, effective, and trouble-free method of managing evaporation on your reef aquarium. Um, like I said, those machines cost between anywhere between $100 and $200, and one of these with you know the necessary parts, I mean, you're talking about between $10 to $30 minus the same reservoir you use on a machine. But I'm not here to get into conspiracies. If you want to learn more about ATO machines, um, just you know Google those. I'm sure there's plenty of examples on YouTube. But now we're gonna take a look at how we deal with evaporation here at the Reef Builder Studio. So when we're discussing evaporation in a reef aquarium setting, um, the conversation shouldn't be only about how to replenish water to your aquarium to make up for the water that's evaporated. It should really be expanded to talk about managing evaporation in your aquarium in all the ways. So there's kind of three different use cases here um, on display at the studio. So we're gonna walk over to one of them now, the Nano Reef Tank that we set up a couple years ago. And we're gonna show you one of the first ways that you can manage evaporation um, before you even start talking about an auto top off solution. So the whole point of an auto top off device is not only to replenish fresh water that's lost evaporation to your aquarium, but also to automate the process so you don't have to sit there and you know top off your tank all the time. 
but what point is it to have an auto top off device in your aquarium if it's evaporating so quickly that you have to refill the reservoir for your auto top off um, very, very frequently. So this aquarium, you guys will be very familiar with it, the one day reef tank, nano reef tank build series. There is no auto top off. We simply put a glass lid over the entire thing um, to minimize evaporation. We still have a gap here for feeding and we have some open air right here um, in the filter section of this particular aquarium. Um, so you can cover the tank as much as you want to the degree that you're not overheating the aquarium because a fully sealed aquarium, um, even without a heater, is gonna build up a lot of heat. But even without an auto top off device, um, this particular aquarium, we have to top it off, I don't know, every three or four weeks with uh, you know maybe about a gallon of water and that to me is about the same benefits we would have if we used an auto top off device without a lid. So unlike the small nano tank that we just showed you, this is our large fish aquarium. It's got a lot of gear, it's got a sump underneath, but we don't have any heater. Instead, we use a full fitting uh, solid lid made out of green wall siding that's been cut almost exactly to the size using a little hole here to prevent evaporation. But that's not enough because this is a very large tank so it does evaporate a lot. And so for this aquarium, we actually have just, it's just so simple. It's, it's like practically steampunk. We have a nice uh, custom made vertical reservoir here with just a viewing window so we can see how much water is in it. And underneath, there's uh, just some simple plumbing parts that connect to a basic float valve. Um, in this configuration where we don't really have heat issues, um, we actually top off this reservoir which holds, I want to say around, around 15 gallons. We top that off about once a month. Nothing to plug in, no pumps, no real moving parts other than an actuating float valve. And uh, I could say more about it, but it really is just as simple as that. So if you live in a warmer climate where it's not really practical, to fully cover the top of your aquarium or the sump to keep the heat in and the evaporation low, you can still use a gravity-fed auto top-off. This is an example of a Kate aquarium that has a mesh top where we're really trying to keep it cool in here for our LPS. This aquarium and some others have large built-in auto top-off reservoirs. Now I'm not talking about the very small little glass boxes of three to five gallons that rest over your sump that you have to top off every week anyway, but these larger reservoirs that come built in, like this one on the Cade, are actually pre-plumbed to some of the best float valves we have here at the studio. Um, this is hard plumbed right into the sump so it doesn't go through the glass walls. And it has a very large float valve there that just automatically replenishes water as it evaporates. So what if you don't have room in your stand and you don't have an aquarium with a built-in auto top-off reservoir? Well, to that I say, you can literally put an auto top-off reservoir anywhere uh, just as long as it's elevated a little bit more than your sump. You can route it as far as you need with this quarter inch uh, semi-rigid tubing, this quarter inch RO line, and just route it as far as you need, um, just as long as it won't get kinks. So here at the studio, we basically just use that large pickle barrel you see there in the back, and we daisy chain the outlet. There's a dedicated float valve for this tank. There's a dedicated float valve for this system right here. And then the two show tanks behind you are also dazing chained into that float valve setup. Um, here's one that you can get a pretty good look at. The RO tubing just kind of comes around here, connects to the float valve, and here on the inside you can see just a, a regular float valve, and that also is daisy chained to a freshwater aquarium with a sump. So we literally have to spend no bandwidth, no time, no mental energy um, dealing with the auto top off solution for all but two of the aquariums here at the Refilter Studio. So if you've messed around with auto top off devices and machines for a long time and you've realized that you've seen the light that a gravity fed auto top off is probably the safest, cheapest and most reliable solution, it could not be any easier to install one on your aquarium. I would advise you against getting these very small dinky little devices here because they just don't provide that much protection. Um, this is more of a classic style float valve right here, you can buy these all shapes and sizes from a number of online retailers. You just, you know, definitely want to avoid ones that have just some metal parts. And there's lots of kits online that will help you um, install this on your sump with the connections 
on the back to insert that quarter inch RO tubing. Um, if you have an acrylic sump, it's just really easy to drill a hole to size. And if you have a glass sump, um, you can get these very small glass drill bits for very cheap nowadays. Now, I definitely want to stress that there are some tanks, especially nano tanks, where there's just, there's no air to put auto top off. You don't want to let it get too hot. There is a time and a place for auto top off devices and machines. But it just really baffles me when I see some Aquarius that are absolute gearheads and they have this sprawling just control center for their reef aquarium and they have their auto top off reservoir right next to the sump and it could just be elevated this much and plumbed right into a float valve and then all of a sudden you get like get rid of five different points of failure and just a hundred percent more reliability. So the, definitely I feel like it's a lot more fun to talk about the gear and the specs and the performance and of an auto top off device. It's not sexy to talk about gravity doing its thing like it has for 13.7 billion years. And so there's a lot of lingo uh, associated with it to, you know, kind of help you feel like you're part of the club and comparing what kind of machines you have. Um, but I, I really feel super strongly that gravity fed auto top offs are absolutely the way to go. There are just a couple pitfalls. So make sure you collect you know you use and install a, a properly sized um, uh, float valve with no metal parts um, really do not put any kind of minerals inside your top off water it's not the end of the world but you just want to reduce those uh, opportunities for failures to occur you don't want any kind of mineral buildup um, in the valve right here where it shuts off um, and I'll tell you what in all my years I have never had a, a float valve stick on. If anything, they'll stick off or they will clog. So you can put a little bit of, you know, a little dose of iron, a little bit of iodine, whatever in your auto top off just for a little bit more replenishment. Um, but here at the Reef Builder Studio, we have 100% faith in gravity to run our float valves and make sure to take care of auto top off functions on our behalf without the use of any machine. So I know the vast majority of the aquarium hobby, when they say ATO, they're talking about a machine that cost between $100 to $200. That is what uh, the commercial side of the aquarium hobby would have you believe that it's pretty much the only way to do it. But um, if you have ever used a gravity float valve for this function, you'll realize like it's just, it's just, you just completely forget about it and it's trouble free, especially if you don't make some of these basic mistakes. So I hope you guys really enjoyed the second installment in our reefology series covering our philosophy on making up evaporation with gravity fed auto top off float valves. If you have any questions about this, um, we have them all around the studio. So we have an extensive experience um, with this version of managing evaporation on our aquariums. This is a great time to get your questions down in the comments. If you enjoyed this video, you want to see more from the Reefology series, or if you have an idea for future series, for future installments of Reefology, let us know. So give us a like, give us a share, and we'll catch you guys on the next one. Thanks for tuning in.